Hey everybody, Melissa here. Welcome to my channel. I'm so excited you're all here. So today we're going to be in Excel, but I want to start with a question before we get started. Have you ever had five or six worksheets open, maybe more, maybe less, and you do an equal sum and you need to reference either via an absolute cell reference or even a relative cell reference data that's in sheet one, but you can't remember that the data you need is in cell B6 through B5457. Ooh, I've been there, I've been there. Mm, I think we've all been there. What if I were to tell you there is an easier way to do that? Well, of course I am, because that's why I'm here, to make your life easier. <laughs> so there is a way in Excel to name the data that is in B6 through B5457 so that you can reference it by name in any other worksheet, any formula, or any function without having to remember where it's at. Hmm. Pretty neat. I cannot wait to show you. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start with defining a single cell. So we have our discount of 3%. And we want that to reflect in our discount column and we want it to reflect in our total column. So normally what we would do is go to our discount and do equals our extended cost times our discount equals 49 cents is our discount and our new total is $15.86. Perfect. But watch what happens when we pull it down. Row, row, zeros. So here's the reason why. Excel automatically defaults to relative cell references. Now let me explain what that means. If you look here in our formula, we have D6 times B16. This is perfect. D6 times B16. If we go to the next one, D7, awesome. B17, again, row, row. This one's looking for the discount in B18, and so on. So one of the things we can do is turn this formula into an absolute cell reference. And what I mean by that is if we put a dollar sign in front of the B, and we put a dollar sign behind the B, and we hit enter, that is telling Excel, I do not care if there's 20,000 lines of product in this worksheet. Always look for the discount here. Now, as we add more products and it pushes this down, this absolute cell reference will move with it. But it's telling it only pull it from this discount and nowhere else. So now when we pull it down to fill, it has put our discounts in and our totals have been adjusted. Now we want to look at how to define multiple cells. So let's just say that we want to add up our quantities. Now we can come down here and we can do our auto sum and we can hit enter that works great we can actually do equal sum open our parentheses do here close them enter works great but we can also highlight all of our product and we can rename this and how we're going to do that is we're going to go up to where this b6 is in our name box and let's just say i want to name it product quantity now, something to keep in mind is you cannot have spaces. So I'm going to do my product underscore quantity. So I'm just going to type in product underscore quantity. I'm going to hit enter. Now, when I go away from it, I go to each individual cell, and you still see B6, B7, B8. But when I highlight them all, you see product quantity. So let's say now I want to sum them up. If I click on my auto sum once, look down here, sum product underscore quantity. Click on it again, and it's added them up. Now the beauty of this is if I go to another sheet and I need to bring this quantity with me. Now this, oh, this workbook only has four or five tabs, but let's just say that you have 20 or 30 workbooks, and you're over here and you're like, oh, I need this quantity, but I do not remember where I put it. I don't remember what sheet it's in, but I do know what I named it. So if we go up here and we go to our bar and we go to formulas tab, use in formula, do our drop down, look here, product quantity, click on it, enter, look at all your quantities, 
Then you can do the same thing with your total. Click on your auto sum, click on it again, and it has summed up based on product quantity. So let's just say that you want to get rid of your named sales. So let's go back to our USA tab. So what we can do is from our formulas tab, we can go in and we can go to the name manager and we can tell it to delete it. Okay. And are you sure? Yes, we're sure. And we're going to close it. Now we have a na hashtag name question mark. And on our total where we used it, we have a hashtag name question mark. And this is basically Excel saying, you took my cell names away. What do you want me to do here? So that's as easy as coming up here if you want to do it auto, hitting your auto sum, hitting enter, and it puts it back. But over here, you would have to either do a 3D reference or you would have to copy and paste them. And there you have it. That's how you name an individual cell or a group of cells so that you can use it in other worksheets within your workbook and make it a lot easier to pull your data without having to remember where it's at. Now, I know that it's quite a bit of work in the beginning, but I promise it's worth it, especially as you have more and more worksheets within your workbook. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this in the future, please subscribe to my channel before you go. And if you have any questions, feedback, or ideas for future content, then drop me a comment, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Until then, thanks so much for watching.